Hello and welcome to this multiple choice question walkthrough for the halogenoalkanes topic. Have a go at the questions yourselves by downloading them from the description, then watch my video and see how you got on. Why are fluoroalkanes unreactive? A. Fluorine is highly electronegative. This statement is true, but it isn't the reason. It is the cause of the reason, which we'll get to in a moment. The F- ion is very stable. Definitely not. Ions are more stable the larger they are, and F- is quite a small ion, so it is less stable than Cl-, Br-, etc. They are polar molecules. Not necessarily. They can be, but you can have symmetrical fluoroalkanes with no dipole moment. And so the correct answer must be D. The CF bond is very strong. And it is very strong because fluorine is highly electronegative. The pattern of electronegativity is that it decreases down the group and therefore the bond strength also decreases down the group and so the halogenoalkanes get more reactive down the group. Which compound is not formed by reacting 3-bromo-3-methylhexane with warm ethanolic potassium hydroxide? Well, these conditions mean that the hydroxide ion is going to act as a base and remove one of the protons from a carbon adjacent to the carbon attached to the halogen. And so if we look at the structure, there are three possible hydrogen atoms that could be removed. We could remove one from the left of the halogen here, and if we do that, we'll end up making the alkene 3-methylhex2-ene in an elimination reaction. Or we could take the hydrogen to the right-hand side, one of those two. If we did that, the elimination would give us 3-methylhex3-ene. And finally, we could remove one of the ones from the bottom. This now gives us a chain of five of our longest chain, not six, and it would give us the alkene 2 ethyl pent one ene So that means that B is the answer. How many different alkenes are formed when 2-bromo-2-methylbutane reacts with ethanolic potassium hydroxide? Well, here is our halogenoalkane, and under these conditions, the hydroxide ion is going to act as a base and remove a hydrogen from one of the carbon atoms adjacent to the halogen-containing carbon atom in an elimination reaction. And so we could remove a hydrogen atom from the right-hand side along with the bromine, and if we do that, we make an alkene that we call 2-methylbut2-ene. If we remove a hydrogen atom from the left-hand side, along with the bromine, we end up making 2 methyl but one ene If we remove a hydrogen atom from the methyl group, we actually end up making the same alkene again, 2 methyl but one ene And so you can see, actually, we can only make two different alkenes, and so A is the correct answer. This question is about a method that can be used to prepare ethyl amine. We've got bromoethane reacting with two ammonias to make the ethyl amine and ammonium bromide. Which of the curly arrows in the mechanism is not correct? Well, this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction where a nucleophile, which is something that is positive seeking with a lone pair, replaces something else that could react in the same way. Curly arrow number one shows a new bond forming between the lone pair on the nitrogen in the ammonia and the electron deficient carbon that was bonded to the halogen. That arrow is correctly drawn. Arrow two shows the bond between the carbon and the halogen breaking and the bromine taking both electrons. Also correct. Arrow three shows the second ammonia acting as a base and removing the hydrogen. Also correct which means that arrow number four must be the wrong answer. What we see is the hydrogen is taking both of the electrons from the bond, which it doesn't actually do, and that's because it forms a new bond to the nitrogen that's coming in and acting as a base. What happens is this pair of electrons is returned to the nitrogen, which is currently positively charged, because its electrons are spread through four covalent bonds, and it is typically three, and what happens is that pair of electrons goes back to the nitrogen, restores the lone pair that nitrogen needs to have, and makes it neutral overall. So four is the incorrect arrow. Which of the following is a correct mechanism for the formation of 2-methylbut2-ene from 2-bromo-3-methylbutane? 
This is going to be an elimination mechanism where the hydroxide ion acts as a base and removes a proton from one of the carbon atoms adjacent to the carbon atom containing the halogen. That's why we can actually rule out D straight away, because in D the hydroxide ion is acting as a nucleophile, it is attacking the electron deficient carbon and the halogen is being substituted. The halogen is leaving and we're going to end up making an alcohol. For A, the hydroxide ion is removing a hydrogen atom from the end of the chain. So we will make an alkene, we'll make the alkene in position number one. And that's because the hydrogen is being removed and this pair of electrons is moving to here to make the double bond. The halogen is leaving and the double bond is going to be on position one. So we're going to make three methyl but one ene. In B, this is the correct answer because the hydroxide ion is removing a hydrogen atom from a carbon next to the bromine and the pair of electrons is going to make a double bond between the second and the third carbon. So the double bond will be on position number two and the halogen is leaving. So this will be the correct answer. The reason that C is wrong is that the hydroxide ion is removing a hydrogen from the same carbon atom as the carbon with the halogen. So we'll actually end up with a carbon atom with only two covalent bonds after this, and that absolutely can't happen. And so B is correct. The question below refers to the reaction of one bromopropane with a solution of potassium cyanide in aqueous ethanol. What is the organic product of this reaction? Well, when you add potassium cyanide to a halogenoalkane, the cyanide ion acts as a nucleophile and the cyanide ion attacks the electron deficient carbon that has the halogen attached to it and the nucleophile is substituting the halogen in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And what we end up doing is we end up lengthening the chain and making a nitrile. So the carbon chain is longer by one and we end up with something called a nitrile. And so in this reaction, we're actually going to be turning our prop into but. So that means that we can rule out A and C because the carbon chain is longer than it began as. And we're not making an amine, we're making a nitrile. And so D is the correct answer. The question refers to the reaction of one bromopropane with a solution of potassium cyanide in aqueous ethanol. Which is the correct mechanism for this reaction? There are a lot of similarities for our options. All of the reactants are actually the same. And in each of them, the bromine is breaking its bond to the carbon and taking the pair of electrons with it. So the only difference between each of our options is the cyanide ion attacking. In A, the cyanide has got the lone pair on the carbon, which is correct, but the cyanide ion would be negatively charged. The nucleophile is Cn minus. So A is not correct for that reason. And for that reason, B is the correct answer because we've got the lone pair on the carbon and it's a negative ion. So B is correct. C is incorrect for two reasons. Lone pair's on the wrong atom and it's not negative. And D, it's just simply the lone pair is on the nitrogen and it should be on the carbon. So B is correct. Which of the following mechanisms is not involved in the reaction sequence below? First of all, we've got ethane. It is converted into chloroethane. That will be a free radical substitution reaction using chlorine and ultraviolet light. And so D is included and so is not an answer that is correct. Then our halogenoalkane is turned into an alcohol. That will be a nucleophilic substitution reaction using sodium hydroxide aqueous as a reagent. So that means that C is wrong. And then the alcohol is converted into an alkene. This will be an elimination reaction, and actually that isn't one of our options, and so this doesn't really help us. And then the alkene is reacted presumably with HBr, and we make our halogenoalkane. That will be electrophilic addition, and so A is an incorrect answer, which means B is not included, and so B is correct. Which statement is not correct about ozone? A. It absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation in the upper atmosphere. That's definitely true and without it, life on Earth wouldn't have been able to evolve in the way that it did. B. Its decomposition is catalyzed by chlorine molecules. That is an incorrect statement. It is chlorine atoms, or specifically chlorine atoms with a free radical, an unpaired electron. 
and in this reaction the chlorine free radical reacts with ozone to make oxygen and the ClO free radical. Then that ClO free radical reacts with more ozone to make two molecules of oxygen and we remake our chlorine free radical, which is why the chlorine free radical is referred to as the catalyst. In C, it decomposes to oxygen, we've just proven that that's true, and D, ozone holes are where we've got a reduced concentration of ozone, definitely also true, and so B is the answer. The question below refers to the reaction between one bromopropane with a solution containing potassium cyanide in aqueous ethanol. This is our clue that nucleophilic substitution is going to occur, the cyanide ion is going to act as a nucleophile. The reactions of one bromopropane and one chloropropane in the same conditions occur at different rates under the same conditions. Which row correctly shows the compound that has the faster rate and the reason for this? Well, the rate of reaction is to do with how easily that carbon to halogen bond is broken. And it follows that the carbon to halogen bond will break if it is weaker. And because of the lower electronegativity of the bromine, or as you go down the group, the halogen to carbon bond gets weaker as you go down the group. So that means that A and C are our two best options because the bond will be weaker between bromine and carbon. As a result, the halogenoalkane with the bromine will react faster, and so A is correct. Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.